This is the chopper, guys. E, I can't take it. I don't. Let's pause it. Head to bed. Head to school. See you guys in the morning. Five in the morning. Let's head to school, I guess. Jump. Unlock it. Lock it. See you guys when I'm at school. Here we are at school, yo. First class for a day. You should be down here. Over here. Here we are. Good morning, class. Class dismissed. Send class to this class here. Good morning, class. Class dismissed. My last class into the day, into the afternoon. Should be upstairs. Upstairs here. Good morning, class. Cars dismissed the front bike. Yeah, but let's go downstairs. Jump. Let's go over here. Go out. Go chill over. Here, dog. Let's go chill here. I normally chill. Press play. Get it. I'm pressing E. Do I, uh, do I go over here now? The bond for now. Yeah. Okay. We see that's on right there. Okay, press R to change the channel. We're on channel 5. Let's go. We go. There you go. We're on channel 7, so there we go. E to close. So we go back. It, it's literally white noise, kid. It's white noise. Are you sure this is your favorite program? He's looking at me. Take hey, Henry to watch the TV. This really is. There is so much movement in this place. I hate this stuff. The program's lit right now. I'm going to leave you boys to it, okay? Don't discuss any bull crap about me. What is happening? Actually scared, guys. 8.30, turn on the shower. He likes to be alone in the bathroom. He just stares at that... What? Hey, what's going on? Hello? I heard some shuffling right there. In the... Jack's Cafe's rich, velvety, smooth barista coffee. Now in drive through at Hungry Jack's. Yesterday, I saw a girl playing the game. Guess what? She still uses ice pea. Yes, it is a high damage. Oh, well, I heard some shuffling right there. In the meantime, let me just uh, head over here a second. They spoke about the fire, right? Something weird about this thing. Something is missing here. We see there's like an insert at the top. It wouldn't be the book, would it? That would, uh, I feel like that would be way too easy. Like, one of these guys... I don't know, let's, let's try and sort one of these out. The, the spines on the books are all unique. I know, now we're thinking weird right now, guys. I'm just saying, this is obviously not right. I'm going down to the Chapooch room. I want to know more about this dude. So, he's down here. We hear this? Well, what is that banging sound? Hold on, E? That's to close the door on our face. We don't want to do that. I don't like being here okay. anyway. You found a rubber duck. Go Why is everything so ahead. dramatic? Yeah, that's better. That's more like okay. it. It's just Go a ahead. rubber duck, of course, Go in a child's name. bedroom. What's this dude? Come here. Oh. What about you? In the child's bedroom? Oh, you said. That's a bit suspect, guys. I ain't gonna lie. Are. That makes me want to look for a crowbar or something. Child. What, what about are you, you hiding in here? This, okay, this is strange. The mirror's turned away. There's gotta be a reason why they would do that. How about in this main bedroom here? Is there something we can take? Oh, look at this. It goes back. I feel so blessed to be finally reunited with my beloved son, oh, Henry. No. After months in Greece, Lady Dudley gave me the information of Don't how to be reconnected me. once again with you, Shall my I son. And here we Love are. You. I'll keep you safe this Love time. No one can ever take you away from me. So no it's disease or curse. You'll be protected by the cruel down there. sky, by the wild boar over the woods, by the smallest spider under the floor cracks. Are they giving me Love locations? Cruel wild boar Shall? and spider. Cool. Am I to look for maybe small statues? of these three things? I'm not sure. We can definitely hit the crew outside. Out here, I'm not sure with a pattern, but it's very well organized. Yeah, we see that. Look for the book that fits here. 
Don't oh, it. I mean, I'd love to game if I could freaking see anything. It's so dark. Looks like uh, maybe the books go at the top, and there's a small line at the very bottom. So just one dumb. of those books. It, it seems like a cool. fairly distinct pattern. Yeah, shut the freak up! I'm busy. I Come on, let's go. Let's go back up my dorm. Oh, see you when I'm at my dorms, I guess. See you at my dorm. You know what I mean. Shit, see you then. See you at my dorm. Go. I'll walk it. Walk it back up. Let's go to up here. Unlock it. Let's go to... Actually, let's go to inside. Lock it back up. Let's go to here. Alright, like it's gonna be this one here. That has to be our book. Boom, I got you. Let's go. You moved. I am hearing movement. If you're moving, buddy, I swear to goodness, I'm, I'm honestly going to take the stuffing out of you and just leave you outside. Yeah, and I'll stop him from moving. So put the book in. Boom, there you go. Fits like a, gl like a glove. Hang on a moment. What the freak is this? we got a safe? Let's I'm going to guess. I, I don't know what I'm doing. Wait, wait. Oh, there's actually a plan to this. So we maybe want to get from zero. Hold up. So reset that. We want to go like zero, four, two. Wait. No, that's too easy. That'd be way too easy. Hold up. Like this? You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Bro, your riddle is trash. I'll beat that thing in like three seconds. The master of unlocking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Call me Jill Valentine. Who the heck was that? And who smashed that window? So that's one of the things that we needed, one of the items. Let's go. Dude's gonna call us. Hold on, first of all. What? Wait, 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 wait. Hey, Chapel, you see where he went, bro? You see that doorway's barricaded up there? Hang on a moment, we gotta talk to our man again one more time. This ain't good, I don't like where this is headed. Wait. What is that? We're getting some like Twitch ASMR up in this thing? Bro, what are you doing? He's tapping his glass. Like, li like... Straight up giving us that. Why'd he do that? Wait, wait. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh, snap! Oh, oh, snap, he ran. I know you moved, buddy. I know you moved. You can only fool me for so long. I saw that. I saw that. So he's on the prowl right now. Okay, this is not good. I don't like my odds. They're slowly decreasing. It's the item. One of them. Oh, oh, I see, I see. So we need two more. We've got the pig. Maybe another one will be involving the duck thing then in that case. If I was ringing it. Buddy, couldn't you just talk before though? We got Hey, hey, Chapu, what are you doing, bro? You're, you're just chilling there. The other guy is gone. the phone or go to him? Answer the phone. It's me, Otis. I managed to find the first key, but it wasn't easy since... Uh, I'm heading towards the chapel's house now. I'll be... Uh, uh, careful. He can't be in two places at the same time. He's not there anymore, so it must be with you. Is it talking about the, uh, the little puppet dude? Be careful. He needs you to... Are you hungry? I don't know what he's yes, talking I about, am. guys. I don't, don't know. Pizza. What do you need me to do? Got it. Oh, oh, oh. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, I don't know where I I'm did order our pizza. Oh, help me, help me. I got him, I got you! Hey! And I what have poison. On? I have leftovers. Oh, Domino pizza. So, I want you to go cook it up for me. Can it? I'll be right back. Good girl. Press play. Wait, what's this? Yes, 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 yes! Don't leave this freaking place. What is that sound? Here you go. Here's your pizza. Thanks. That's him. Let's That's his eat. sound. So, it's a scanner. 
Borex Code, how's it going today? Oh, Hopefully everybody watch this video is having yourself a snazzy day. Let me know in the comments down below. Let me know in the comments down below where you're watching the video from inside or outside of the United States. I always love to know. I have stuttered in the intro in hundred videos, man. I'm leaving it in. Today's story was absolutely wild. Absolutely crazy. One of the worst wake and bakes of my life. The story took place at my buddy's house in high school. This was the same place where I'd serve Bud all day. He had like the drive through <laughs> he had like a drive through situation on his on his driveway because it was like a U. So I'd stand at like the top of the U. People would pull in, here's the here's the weed man, give me the money. And they'd just pull out one swift motion. It was fucking awesome. And this was Got also nice the tits, period of time. Right? where I had a Thanks. really, really Welcome big girl. bong. It was one of the best bongs I've ever had. A 22-inch nice straight shot. Too. SB, which Thanks. I think is a brand Welcome. off of the brand Roar, which was legendary. I remember, like, paying my friend to hit his Roar bong because he was, like, upperclassman, like, didn't want to hang out with me because I was young. But I was like, dude, dude, I'll give you five bucks. Just let me hit the Roar once, man. It was totally worth it, too. I think it had like an ice catcher and everything. Put the ice in there. Man, man, that was one of the best bongs ever. Like, there's something about quality glass. It is so worth it because it's just, it just hits so much better. It's so smooth. The story starts at my buddy's house. I slept over his house. It was like 5, 6 in the morning. We used to always go and wake and bake with the bong outside. It was so chill, man. The crisp air, nice bong hits. Probably listen to Sublime or Slightly Stupid on one of our old Android shitty phones. Maxing out the volume on it. It's all distorted anyways. Let's, we make it wake up his dogs. They start barking at us. His parents would get pissed. Come out. What are you guys doing? They see us with a big ass bong in the, in the front yard, dude. We had this really chill spot. Right in, right, in, right in the front of his house, there's this big tree with a picnic table. And we'd be out there just smoking bongs. Like every time a car would go by, we'd be like, oh, hide it, hide it, hide it, dude, hide it. We were really blowing up the spot, making it fucking level 10 sketchy, I gotta say. <laughs> this time. This time, dude. I remember I just recently got back from riding with this crazy ass driver to go two <coughs> rounds over and get like, <coughs> fire butt. Like this stuff was next level. This was from the same plug that I made a video about getting robbed. This was like one of the only times I just had my money stolen from me. Like it was I think it was 180 bucks or 160 or something. I was getting like half ounce and I know it's expensive, but anyway, it was fucking gas, but He's like, yeah, just gotta go around the corner. There's that story. If the person's gotta go around the corner for a second, it's gone. You're beat. <laughs> so I had a fresh pack of this bud. I remember it always tasted and smelled so fruity. Just so good. We're sitting out on his front picnic table getting faded as a hoe. All right. Dude, shout out Fulcrum, man. I love that guy. Yodi gang. And we would just keep going with this bong. I had like a really small like bowl slide in it. And I would just pack it right to the brim. And we'd, we'd clear it all in one and then keep passing it around. We probably were going through an eighth this morning, getting blitzed, getting category six blasted. And I remember so vividly the bong was passed back to me. And as I'm like grabbing it out of my friend's hand, cops just start whipping by. Dude, lights on, full fucking force. Four or five cops just whip by the house. I'm like, oh shit, oh shit, freaking out. I grab the bong. We start running away, like towards like the backyard, and we're like just like peeking around the corner, dude. Endless cops, like the whole fucking squad, the whole goddamn police force is just flying by my dude's house. It's like a scene out of a fucking movie, man. We're sitting there, hearts bumping out of our chest. I ran into my dude's basement. And I put the bong away, like put a blanket over it. I'm thinking, oh my God, the cops are going to come raid us. Because this would always be a fear on my mind. We used to just sit there and fucking sell ounces of butt all day. Sometimes even close to like quarter pounds, half pounds. Listen, there were some good days. And I would always worry about the cops showing up. Can you get like they, they built some investigation me on me or something. I was so paranoid, dude. Because I, I, I was worried it was my buddy's house. I didn't want to get his, you know, his parents in trouble, too, on top of it. Like, they would always be pissed to see me out there do that, because that's what they thought was going to happen, too. So I'm thinking, fuck, today's the day, dude. It's, it's happening right now, man. Everybody's all fucking freaking out. So we put everything away. We hide everything we can. There's so much shit around the room. There's no way it was everything. And we, we creep back outside. We're just like looking. We're waiting. And then the worst case scenario. A fucking cop pulls into the driveway. Ooh, so we're like, oh, shit. here we go. That's it. We're fucking beat. I'm beat. I'm going to jail today. <laughs> you know, like, 
three ounces of butt down there, the bomb, they're going to find it all, they're going to bring in the drug dog, it's all over. I'm seeing movies reenacted in my vision, dude, I'm fucking done. I'm so baked, a whole eighth through the fucking 22 inch straight shot to my dome, oh, yeah. absolutely oh. obliterated. <laughs> as soon as we saw that cop pull in, we fucking backed up, we're in the backyard, bugging out, my buddy's looking at me like, dude, I told you this is going to happen, what the fuck, man, what the fuck? And then we start to relax a little bit, just a little bit, because we see the homeowner, like my, my buddy's stepdad, goes out there and starts talking to the cop, and it doesn't look serious, you know, it doesn't look that serious. And then we put two and two together in our minds, and we're like, wait a minute, this dude knows a couple cops in the area, I don't know why he did. There have been a couple times where we're chilling there, and like, he, a cop would show up, and he was like, complaining about something, like, he, it's like he knew people in the cops, and we were like, yeah, this person's doing this, man, you should look into that, like that kind of stuff, man. Like, nothing on a personal level. Like, I think it was, like, business, like, business tactics to try to fucking, like, I don't know, to make his business work better. Anyways, some corrupt-ass cops or something. We sat there quiet as a mouse. The anticipation of figuring out what was going on was killing us, dude. We were basically sober at this point. We were so fucking shivered in our boots, dude. Shivered to the core. We waited there for, like, 20 minutes while they were just sitting there talking felt like every minute was an hour long and finally finally this cop pulls out real slow like and the my buddy's stepdad comes back in we rush upstairs and we're like dude what just happened what were all the cops flying by for and it turns out it turns out that the neighbor two houses down had a huge grow up in their backyard like just boldly out, out in the open not fenced in you could almost see it from the road it was so big and like the plants were like seven feet tall and the other neighbors had been complaining for weeks and the cops were building over his property top down view saw the plants can you imagine that they brought out the fucking drones this was 20 20 fucking 2015 2016 that just says enough how much fucking money the police force has here, dude. Like, drones were expensive back then. On top of it, I can't believe they even had that technology. I wonder if they hired, like, a, a third-party, like, company to come in and be like, alright, we're gonna need some drone shots, and, like, didn't tell them what it was for. I don't know the dude's name, or otherwise I'd look up the, the, the case and see exactly what he was charged for. Like, because I want to know the amount, dude, because I think when they catch you with a grow-up, they, like, take the whole plant out of the ground and, like, just weigh the whole thing. And that's how much, like, it's it crazy. Absolutely crazy. I don't know if they count the plants or, like, how it's done. I remember hearing stories from this old head we used to smoke with down at the, the rope swing. And he would tell me that when he was a kid, or he told me when he was a kid, that he got caught with, like, it was, like, 14 grams of weed, so, like, a half ounce. And, dude, the cop was such a dick that he took the weed, weighed it with the mason jar. So it was, like, what, like a pound or something crazy? So he had a felony on his record for that. He had to actually go to jail other than, like, get a ticket or maybe, like, a misdemeanor or something with the jar. That's some fucking bullshit. Like, you can... Dude, imagine you're rocking a jar like this, man. <laughs> you know, zero to 60, you're gonna be El Trapo, man. I thought that was the day. I thought that was the day I was going to jail, man. That shit was terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Probably one of the scariest wake and bakes of my life. I should title the video that, Scariest Week. Maybe I'll think of something better than that, but anyways. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to support the channel, you get access to the uncensored version. At places like these, it truly doesn't surprise me one bit. Oh, We're looking God. at you, lobotomies, and other horrific mental health treatments of the past. These doorknobs must have quite literally opened the door to some terrifying things that I'm sure many of us would prefer to not even think about. According to the eBay listing, the asylum that they came from after it was abandoned is said to have had strange whispers, occurrences, and horrifying noises coming from it. This is all to say that maybe that trip to Home Depot is better than buying antique. Just this one time. In our number two spot today we have the nightmare doll haunted dolls like annabelle and even robert get a lot of hype but they certainly aren't the only dolls with stories of curses and hauntings behind them this nightmare doll was listed for sale on ebay and according to the seller the doll is possessed by a dibuk which is a malicious demon or entity the seller of the doll is actually someone who apparently specializes in selling these sort of paranormal items that no one wants anymore the seller explained that the owner of the doll bought it at an antique shop and while they did tell her about what the doll held 
she didn't know what the word meant, so she took it anyways. Soon after purchasing it, she realized that anyone who came into contact with the doll was then plagued with terrifying nightmares and occurrences of these sort of shadow people. She only could handle this all for a couple of months before she handed the doll over for it to be sold and moved far, far away from her. In our number one spot today, we have the carving. This is a carving that was sold on eBay in 2013, which the sellers claimed had been in their family for over 60 years. It was originally found by the seller's grandparents in the attic of their home. This was back in the 1950s, and when it was found, the grandparents asked the original owners of the home where it had come from. They explained that it was a gift from a prisoner who was said to have carved it. The seller explained in their post that, quote, anyone who comes in contact with it seems to feel strange or creeped out by it. The statue mostly didn't cause too much harm. That was until the seller tried to put it on display in their home. Once it was taken out of an old box and placed in a cabinet, strange occurrences began. They said that, quote, I began to experience the television turning off and on, lights coming on in rooms no one was in, the kids' toys coming on in the middle of the night in their room at 3 a.m. At the end of the day, despite the troubles this person had with the statue, they still ended up selling it for 85 bucks. Not a bad deal. Get rid of a demon and gain some cash for it. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the statue. This statue, or bust, is said to have been made by a man named William, who enjoyed making these sorts of things out of clay. Unfortunately, however, legend goes that this specific statue was made on the same day that William was crushed to death during a tragic work accident. A co-worker of his who showed up to work the following day found that this statue was still there, so he took it home with him. For a while, he kept the statue hidden, but when he took it out to display it, things started to go awry. It started with just a heavy and uninviting feeling, but soon things escalated. He began to hear doors slamming on their own, only to go and find them wide open. If anything was placed next to the statue, the next time he would find it completely shattered, and at one point he found the statue in a position that he never placed it in. He finally had the last straw when he saw a dark, shadowy figure, or a sort of mist, moving around near where he placed the statue. After this, he was so spooked he had a friend list the item for him on eBay because he just simply needed to get rid of it. In our number nine spot today, we have the Iceman. Okay, so this is not an object because it's a mummy, but I still had to include him on this list because the story is so crazy. The mummy of Otzi, who is also referred to as the Iceman, was found in 1991 in the Otzel Alps in Italy. It is believed that Otzi lived around 3000 BC and his body became mummified and preserved because of the glacier that surrounded him post-mortem. While this is an incredibly interesting discovery, the finding of Otzi may have come in a package with an old curse just waiting to be released. Here's the thing. The people who helped with the discovery of Otzi are all dying under mysterious circumstances. I mean, we are currently at person number seven within one year, so that's very suspicious. When molecular archaeologist Tom Loy was writing a book about Otzi, he passed away from a blood-related condition that he was diagnosed with shortly after becoming involved with the Iceman. The German tourist, Helmut Simon, who discovered the mummy, felt his death while hiking in the same spot he saw Otzi. Dieter Warnick, who was the head of the mountain rescue team that was assigned to finding the mummy, died of a heart attack at just age 45, just an hour after Simon's funeral. To avoid this becoming an hour-long list, I'll stop here, but that is just half of those who seemingly fell victim to the curse of the Iceman. I don't know, maybe disturbing a man who's been in the same spot for... 53 centuries wasn't the best idea anyone has ever had. In our number 8 spot today, we have the Atlantis Ring. 60 in the Valley of the Kings in a tomb of an Egyptian high priest. It was then passed on to Howard Carter, who kept it until he passed away in 1939. The ring was believed to be at least 5,000 years old, and it had geometric symbols carved into it that were unlike anything known in Egypt. Here's where the story gets a little weirder, though. Howard is one of the people who discovered King Tut's tomb, and he would later tell people that he was wearing a talisman when the tomb was opened, aka the Atlantis Ring. He claimed that the ring gave him protection, and that just might be true because he is the only member of the team who didn't die a mysterious death after the opening of the tomb. Even those who visited shortly after the opening of the tomb were subjected to this curse, with a total of 18 victims in the end. Howard said that this ring is what protected him against whatever evil forces were at play. So I guess maybe the Atlantis ring is more like an 
anti-cursed object? I don't know. But what I do know is that it is all quite curious. There are now replicas that are sold, but I'm sure none hold the power of the real deal. In our number seven spot today, we have the Bizano vase. The Bizano vase was cast from silver in the 15th century and was apparently a wedding present for a bride who lived in a small village in Napoli. On the wedding night, however, the bride was found dying on the floor with her hands wrapped around the vase. With her last breaths, she vowed to have her revenge, and at this point, it became unclear whether the vase was already <laughs> cursed or perhaps if this may be what caused the curse in the first place. As time went on, the vase was handed from person to person within her family, and with each new owner came a mysterious death. Because of this, the family decided to hide the vase away in some sort of secret location, and this worked for a while until the vase was unearthed once more in 1988. The vase also contained a piece of paper from the family that warned, beware, this vase brings death. Well, of course, whoever found this vase did not listen, and instead, they sold the vase once again. The first buyer, who was said to have been a pharmacist, owned the vase for three months before passing away under mysterious circumstances. Then, there was the 37-year-old surgeon who died after having the vase for two months. After this was the archaeologist who only made it through. Let's pause it. Let's go to our front on the balcony. Final. Unlock it. Go to here. Push Three months with this vase in his possession, and at this point, you get where this is going. At this point, we don't know exactly where this vase ended up, but I'm hoping it's somewhere deep underground, or in space, or somewhere else far, far away from us all. In our number six spot today, we have the Belcourt Castle Chairs. Belcourt Castle is located in Newport, Rhode Island, and it is a former summer cottage. Construction on the cottage started in 1891, with it being completed in 1894, and inside, there is a ballroom. This ballroom is important because it is said that it holds a group of haunted chairs. People who have visited the castle have reported a ton of strange happenings regarding this specific set of chairs. The reports include things like feeling chills racing up and down their spines, or feeling a strange sensation and a shift of energy while standing near the chairs, and some people have even explained how they have been pushed out of the chairs by an invisible force. I feel like just hearing these stories might be enough to explain the energy shift some people are feeling, but actually Actually being pushed out of a chair by some sort of invisible force would be absolutely terrifying. In our number five spot today, we have the Koh-i-Noor Diamond. This diamond has an extremely controversial history, and it is the source of a lot of debate, but regardless of the ongoing conversations over who really owns it, we are here to talk about the curse that this stone is said to hold. The diamond dates back thousands of years, and its curse is said to only affect men. It is said that the jewel can bring about great wealth, but it can also bring great misfortune as well to those who own it. Folklore states that, quote, he who owns this diamond will own the world, but will also know all its misfortunes. Only God or women can wear it with impunity. Throughout the history of the diamond, it was passed among many people and rulers who all fought bloody battles while in possession of it. Every prince who had it is said to have ultimately either lost their power or their life while in possession of it as well. Part of the controversy of the diamond is how it ended up in the hands of the British royal family during colonization in the 1800s. Ever since then, it has only been worn by female monarchs, including Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth. In our number four spot today, we have the Destiny Ring. Rudolph Valentino was an incredibly famous silent film star before he passed away at the super young age of just 31 years old, and there are many out there who believe his untimely death was caused by the Destiny Ring. This ring is one that he picked up from a California jeweler. Before purchasing it, there were warnings of the stories which claimed that this ring was cursed, but Rudolph decided to go ahead with the purchase anyway. It is said after this ring came into his possession, his luck began to turn. The movies he starred in started to do poorly, some even flopping, and his career began to struggle. From there, he fell incredibly ill, and when he passed away, he was wearing this cursed ring. From there, after his death, his lover ended up receiving the ring, but once it was in her possession, she too fell extremely ill, and she decided to give the ring away. All the owners after that were reported to have died in strange ways or under mysterious circumstances, 
which has led to the ring now being placed in a bank vault, all locked up so that it hopefully can never cause harm to anyone again. In our number three spot today, we have The Orphan Story. This is a book that was originally written in the early 1600s, but it didn't end up getting published until 2018. The Orphan Story is about a 14-year-old Spanish boy who heads to the Americas. You know, a classic kind of coming-of-age feel-good story, right? Well... Lord knows I can't sing, but luckily, I just got some credits from the Smule app. So today, as a Smule VIP, I'll be choosing from the coming-of-age feel-good story, right? Well, not exactly. And that is exactly the reason why it took so long for it to be published. While the curse in this book doesn't come from the story itself, there is something dark lurking in those pages. The book's publisher, Belinda Palacios, who worked on the book for two years, explained that throughout those years, she was often warned of the cursed book and how every publisher who had tried to work on it before ended up passing away in a mysterious way before they could finish the book. When Belinda looked into this, it turned out to be true. Her research showed that those who tried tried to edit the book before either found themselves in horrible accidents or with strange illnesses. Luckily, Belinda made it through the process unscathed, so let's hope that maybe the curse has been lifted. Either way, it's probably one I'll personally stay away from. In our number two spot today, we have The Van. Dr. Kevorkian was a man who's called an angel of death. If you haven't heard of these people before, they are doctors who like to euthanize patients, normally against their will. So this piece of work was doing just that, and one of his most important tools was his large white van. Yeah, huge red flag already. The van later went on to have the nickname Deathmobile, and it made headlines again when it found its way into a pawn shop. The reason the person who had previously had it didn't want it anymore is because they claimed that there were strange occurrences that began happening once it was in their possession. This story led to paranormal investigator and ghost hunter Zach Bagan purchasing it. Apparently, people who enter the van immediately feel just overwhelming sadness and they also feel like there are unseen eyes that are watching them at all times in our number one spot today we have the cursed chest the story of this cursed chest starts off with a horrible person named jeremiah graham who is said to have been making preparations for his firstborn son part of these preparations was having a hand carved chest made and the person he got to make this chest was a man who he had enslaved named remus when remus finished the chest jeremiah was not satisfied, so he began to harm Remus, who would unfortunately later pass away from his injuries. The other people who lived and worked in the home were rightfully horrified and angry about this situation, so they decided to sprinkle dried owl blood inside of the drawers, all while placing a curse on the chest. It is said that the curse brought tragedy to anyone who put their clothes inside of it, and apparently it is a curse that is working with a vengeance, as it is said that this chest and the curse are responsible for taking the lives of of at least 16 people. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the Screaming Skull. Bettisco Manor is often referred to as the House of the Screaming Skull, thanks to a legend that dates back to the 19th century. Legend goes that the owner of the manor at the time of this legend had a slave who fell seriously ill. As he lay dying, he had one last request, which was to have his body returned to his home. It's a pretty fair request, and truly the least this family could have done for the man. In fact, to even coming from the cemetery. Apparently, at the manor, they began the experiencing one. things like the windows rattling and the doors slamming, seemingly of their own accord. Listen, I wish that this man could have just rested at home like he was supposed to be, but considering how awful these people were, I am so happy that he made sure everyone and their families were haunted because of their greedy behavior. In the end, it is said that the hauntings got so bad, they ended up exhuming the body and bringing it into the manor. From here, it is said that the body somehow disappeared, all except for the skull, which still resides in the manor. In our number nine spot today, we have the Golden Eagle. This car was a 1964 Dodge 330 limited edition, and it has been blamed for the death of around 14 people, which, like off to another man. Throughout the 80s and 90s, it is said that because of the rumored cursed car, it became a point of interest for vandals. People began vandalizing the car only to meet their own untimely
deadly fates, which were all met in strange ways. For example, it was said that one vandal died from being struck by lightning. It is said that the curse is so strong that one person decided to merely touch the car, and it sent him into madness as he went on to commit atrocious crimes after that that I cannot even detail here on YouTube. The car now belongs to Wendy Allen, who supposedly collects and decorates haunted cars for a living, so it seems as though it's finally found its home. Far, far, far away from anyone else. In our number eight spot today, we have the Blarney Stone. For hundreds of years, the Blarney Stone has resided within Blarney Castle, which is near Cork, Ireland. The stone is a piece of limestone, and legend says that those who give the stone a smooch will then be given the gift of the gab. This little smooch can bestow the power of being able to talk your way out of any situation, which would be incredibly useful, but there are those who always try to indulge in too much of a good thing. The issues start when you attempt to take a piece of the stone, no matter how small, away from a home. Those who don't follow the rules and take the stone end up being cursed with bad luck. Every year the castle receives parcels from greedy tourists who tried their luck at stealing portions of the stone. These parcels are returned with the intention of lifting the curse of misfortune. It is said that once the stone is returned, the curse will be lifted, which is most definitely good news. So I guess the moral of this curse, however, is to not be greedy and to just follow the rules. In our number seven spot today, we have the Terracotta Army. The Terracotta Army was discovered in China, and it is a massive piece of funerary art that is thought to be one of the most massive archaeological finds of modern times. It truly is incredible, and it's something that's been attracting tourists from all over the world since its discovery. But for those who did the discovering, well things haven't been going so well. In 1974, there were seven farmers who happened to stumble upon this huge discovery, and you would think that this would come with some kind of a reward, but instead, things have been going terribly for them. Soon after the discovery, the government claimed their farmland. After this, their homes were demolished in order to make way for the exhibition halls and gift shops that were to come. They didn't just get nothing for the discovery, they ended up losing because of it. This is exactly why many people believe that perhaps with the unearthing of this huge piece of art, they also dug up some sort of curse that was buried long ago. In our number six spot today, we have the Myrtle's Plantation Mirror. Myrtle's Plantation is located in St. Francisville, Louisiana, and it is said to be one of the most haunted places in the entire world, which seems like that would make a lot of sense. One of the reasons for this spooky reputation is because of a mirror that resides inside of it. It is said that this mirror holds the spirit of Sarah Woodruff and two of her children. Legend goes that a woman named Chloe was a slave at the plantation, and she drew up a sort of plan to get revenge on the owners of it, Sarah and her husband. Chloe baked a cake full of poison for them, but in the end, the rest of the family, except for the husband, ended up consuming the poisonous cake. When they passed away, it is said that their spirits went into the only mirror that was uncovered at the time, thus this haunted mirror was born. People who have since visited the plantation have claimed to see the family in the reflection, as well as handprints on the glass, despite the continuous polishing. Despite the continuous polishing. In our number five spot today, we have tap shoes. These tap shoes were listed on eBay, and they are cute as can be. They're black shiny ones with a red bow to tie them together. They look recital ready, but apparently they haven't been used in a long time, and the reason behind it all is chilling. Legend goes that these shoes once belonged to a little girl who loved to dance. At some point, the shoes were retired, and she would go on to meet an untimely fate. The shoes ended up being placed with other old... The shoes ended up being placed with other old memento items and put in a closet and sort of forgotten about. The shoes, as well as the other items with it, ended up being part of an estate sale years later, but the spirit of the person who passed may have already had some other ideas about what they wanted to happen to the shoes. The seller of the shoes reported that there were mysterious happenings surrounding the shoes as they were clearing out their late aunt's house, the person who was the owner of the shoes. They explained that there were mysterious knocking sounds coming from inside of the closet, almost as if the shoes were tapping by themselves. Also, as it turns out, the house had quite a gruesome history that included killings, so if not the ant's ghost, perhaps there's another one lurking somewhere in there. In our number four spot today, we have the dark mirror. This mirror now resides with the traveling museum of the paranormal and the occult, but prior to that, this mirror was received from the owner who had purchased it from a psychic fair. It is believed that this mirror was created sometime around the 1820s or 30s, 
parties, and it is actually quite beautiful to look at, despite the sinister things it seems to hold. The owner who gave it to the museum explained that every time they peered into the mirror, they saw these extremely upsetting things while looking into the dark mirror's reflection. The museum has said that since they added the mirror to their collection, there have been guests who have also reported the same kind of things. Guests have claimed to see things reflected back at them like sightings of their own corpse. In our number three spot today, we have the water jug. Okay, estate sales are weird places. There are weird things there, some quirky items, but this has got to be one of the strangest on a whole bunch of different levels. It's a decorative drinking jug, but it's being held in a miniature cart that's being pulled by a porcelain donkey. I truly could not make that item up, nor could I make up the fact that this kitschy item is also apparently haunted. The seller of this item spoke about how he grew up with the item around as it was always displayed at his grandmother's house and that she always kept it full of water. This was all fine and dandy until after she passed away and he was taking care of the estate and he bumped into it. How was this jug filled with water when no one was there to fill it? He thought the captain was just old, leftover water, and he just ignored it. But the same things seemed to happen repeatedly. And it wasn't even like the water level was staying the same. It would increase, seemingly all on its own. The seller decided that this was not an item that they wanted to hold on to and decided it would be best to pass on to someone who was ready to take on this mysterious, strange object. In our number two spot today, we have Letta the Doll. Before we really dive into this one, can we just acknowledge how all cursed dolls look like they would be a cursed doll? I mean, like Annabelle, Robert, they both totally look like dolls that would be holding a secret, scary curse. And this doll, Letta, is just another one that we can add to that list. Letta is a doll that is said to be a around 200 years old and is extremely cursed. This doll is called Letta for short as its full name is Letta Me Out. Really clever. The doll was originally found underneath a house, which definitely feels like the origin story of a haunted doll. The creepy discovery came 47 years ago. Letta still lives with the man who found him. The hauntings of Letta include things like the doll walking around on its own at night, the owners finding objects around the house that have been moved into odd places. Some people have even seen Letta move right in front of their own eyes, and the owner also reports finding little doll-sized scuff marks around the home as well. It is said that this doll once belonged to someone who passed away while holding it, thus their spirit became trapped inside of the doll. Apparently one day in an interview about Letta, as the interviewer was asking questions about the person who passed, the doll began to move in her lap. Yeah, no thank you. Letta has his own Instagram and Facebook page in case you want to hear more about all of the creepiness surrounding Okay, so have you ever wondered what the heck is going on with those red tip bananas? Don't worry. Me too. Mm -hmm. Number 10, Adrian Carton DeWired. Over the course of six decades and...